Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you happen to be. Welcome to another live iThemes Training live stream. My name is Nathan Ingram. I'm the host here at iThemes Training. And it is News Roundup today. Once a month, we take a look across the world of WordPress and we bring in the top news stories that we think are important, particularly uh, for those of us that are building and managing WordPress sites. So a lot of WordPress news out there and uh, all of this news is angled towards and sort of applied towards and some of my thoughts along the way to those of us that are working with clients doing WordPress type things. So even if that's not you, it's going to be helpful. We have a lot to talk about today, but if that is you and you're part uh, of the folks that are working with clients doing WordPress, I think you'll find some interesting things in this month's roundup. Uh, if you're watching this on the recording, uh, just below the video, there is a download handout button or slide link that you'll be able to download the slides, everything you see on the screen. And that's particularly helpful for this live stream because uh, we'll have links to all of the things that we talk about down in the footer of every slide. So if you want to read up a little bit more about anything we talk about, you got all the source links right there. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, and by the way, this is being recorded and the link to the replay uh, was just posted in the chat a couple minutes ago. And uh, same link that you used to register. And uh, we'll have that video up in about an hour or so after we wrap up today. So let's get started with news from core WordPress and see all the things that are going on in uh, the core world. First of all, you probably noticed that WordPress 6.3.1 dropped a couple of weeks ago, back on August the 29th, I guess a few weeks ago now, on August the 29th. Four main bug fixes in core WordPress, six bug fixes in the block editor. It was a short cycle maintenance release. No real issues involved in that, but, um, and that, that, will, that possibly will be the, the only 6.3. something that we see unless something comes up. I don't think anything else is planned. I could be wrong about that. Uh, WordPress 6.4 is happening. Uh, it is set to be released on November the 7th of this year. So just a couple of months away, not even, it looks like seven weeks from now, uh, WordPress 6.4 will drop. Uh, this is a release that's being led by an underrepresented gender release squad, which is kind of cool to see. Uh, this release is particularly focused on enhancements across the editing experience. So a lot of work is being paid to tightening up uh, some of the editing features uh, and doing some really cool things to the WordPress admin that in my opinion are long overdue. Uh, five Gutenberg releases will be wrapped up and bundled into WordPress 6.4. Uh, so that's always good to see as well as we see Gutenberg going on and advancing uh, with two releases each month. So one of the primary things that you're going to see in WordPress 6.4 is the new font library. So the font library, think of it like the media library, but for fonts. So up until this point, you've had to have some sort of feature in your theme or install another plugin to bring in outside fonts. So uh, if the font wasn't bundled with your theme specifically, a lot of things like Cadence, for example, will let you pull in a Google font and then load that font locally. Uh, to your uh, WordPress site, which is awesome. Uh, this is now going to be a function of core WordPress. So you'll be able to install and use fonts across your site, just like many themes allow you to do today. The font library, again, think of it like the media library, but for fonts, it's not dependent on any theme or plugin. It will be extendable by plugins. So it uh, will be interesting to see what some developers uh, decide to do with the font library and making things a little cooler with plugins like they always seem to do. This is a bit of a view of what it might look like. It's a very early design rendering. So pretty similar to what we've seen now uh, in the way themes handle things with give you kind of a, a card view of the different fonts you can pull in. And again, uh, fonts are copied to and served from your own server. So if you're concerned about the privacy issues that are inherent, with using Google fonts as pulled in from Google. And also, by the way, speed issues that can happen if you're pulling in fonts from Google CDN instead of loading the font locally. This is gonna take care of all of that. So you'll be able to use Google fonts inside of WordPress uh, without any other issue. And also just upload your own bespoke web font. So if you're a type kit person, that sort of thing, you'll probably be able to uh, load your fonts and we'll see how all that flushes out. Uh, but yeah, it'll, it's gonna allow you to in core, change the font of your site, which I think that's been needed for quite a while. So I'm happy to see that coming. 
Also, there are three new blocks that will be incorporated in WordPress 6.4. One we talked about, uh, I believe it was last month or the month before, uh, which is the table of contents block. Uh, this is super helpful. Uh, it's part of, it's, it's already been released in a Gutenberg release, and that'll be part of the Gutenberg uh, development that'll be merged into core at 6.4. This table of contents block sits above your content or wherever uh, and automatically pulls in a table of contents based on the headings of your document. Uh, so it's really cool. You've probably seen those. A lot of plugins do that. Uh, page builders have those modules. Uh, anyhow, it's a great addition that's going to be part of core. Also, and this is really great, uh, they are bringing in the ability for a light box viewing of images. Now, a light box, when you click on an image, it kind of zooms it out in a, you know, uh, pops up over the content of your web page, maybe uh, dims the background a little bit, hence the light box uh, name. And so Lightbox, so your image Lightbox will be part of a core WordPress in the font uh, block. So uh, here's what it might look like. Again, this is all still in development, but uh, there'll be a, like a behaviors drop down. Do you want this to click through or open in a Lightbox or whatever? What kind of animation do you want that Lightbox to have? Like kind of zoom out or float in or whatever they decide to do there. Uh, you can also apply those globally so you don't have to set every single uh, image block to the same thing. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this is all in development. It could change, but this is where this direction is heading. Pretty cool. Uh, also, there is a scrolling marquee block. Yes, a scrolling marquee block, because that's what we need in the world is more scrolling marquees. Uh, how many of you have been around the web for a while and you remember those little ticker tape marquees that went all the way across? Oh, boy. Yeah. This was actually a popular ad request uh, from the WordPress community. So here it comes, scrolling marquee blocks coming your way. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, as we start thinking about the future of WordPress and what's next for Gutenberg, uh, that was a big focus of some of the conversations at WordCamp US uh, last month. More than 2,000 attendees gathered for two days of keynotes, sessions, and community building at the Gaylord. National Resort and Convention Center there in National Harbor, Maryland, just across the river from Washington, D.C. It was a great event. I was there. I got to see a lot of you there. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was the largest attended WordCamp ever. So if you were one of the ones who was there at WordCamp U.S. 2023, you are part of history. You were one of the people that made this the largest WordCamp gathering ever. Uh, the Saturday sessions were concluded with back-to-back -back keynotes by Matt Mullenweg and Josefa hayden Chamfosi, who's the executive director of WordPress. And uh, if you haven't seen these yet, I would uh, invite you to do that. Josefa's talk was very interesting about the future of WordPress. It is available on YouTube at that link that you see right there on your screen. And of course, Matt Mullenweg, the co-founder of WordPress, uh, also had his talk about what is next for Gutenberg. That's right. And Matt even answered a question from Awesome Paul. So there you go. Uh, good stuff. So that talk is there on YouTube as well as a follow-up Q&A with both Matt and Josefa, uh, and that these, this really good information to watch. So if you've not yet seen those, you can do that. They're live on the WordPress YouTube channel. They're not yet, oddly, on WordPress.tv, but they will be sometime soon. WordPress TV is notoriously slow for getting talks up. Uh, with 6.4 is a new 2024 theme, and some details about that was uh, uh, they were unveiled this a uh, couple weeks ago, I believe, yeah, at the end of August. So 2023, this year's default theme, or I guess that was last year's default theme, it was released before 2023. Anyway, the previous default theme, 2023, was really just a stripped down, minimalized version of 2022 that focused a lot on community submitted style variations and uh, using all of the new block style blocks uh, that were added to Gutenberg. 2024 is really gonna focus on the new design improvements that are available in WordPress. It's gonna be a block theme fully compatible with the side editors. It's gonna have a, a several different, uh, different design tools. There's gonna be a big design library with a lot of pre-baked patterns that you can just drop in. Uh, and recolor and refont to your own specifications. So pretty cool. Uh, the, the power of core WordPress without any additional uh, themes and plugins is really, it's really improving. Uh, they also have whole page patterns that will be included. Um, and this is uh, uh, some of an example of some of those things, really low resolution. That's the best we got right now. 
Uh, along with this, the WordPress design team has begun to showcase some of its work as well. Uh, in a recent blog post, link down there in the footer, by the way, this is one of those I would encourage you to just click out to and take a look at. There's a lot of neat stuff here. Uh, the design team has, has showed off what they've been working on, including a visual refresh of the themes directory at wordpress.org slash themes. Here's how it, it uh, this was the original prototype and it has since, yeah, kind of made it become a little more expressive. It looks good. It's easier to find things. It's pretty cool. Um, They've also added some functionality or they're working on functionality in WordPress. And well, let me, let me stop. What the design team does is take all of the great work the core developers do and make it actually easier to use. <laughs> so adding some UX design and some beauty to uh, the buttons and slashes that the uh, developers come up with uh, and make things a lot more usable. So they think through what is the user experience of a person who wants to use all these cool features and let's surface those and make the, you know, the most important things easy to find and easy to use. So they, they've been working on this feature that lists user patterns by category uh, and allows us as users to categorize our own block patterns. So this is kind of what that might look like as I'm uh, clicking and you know, selecting this row and creating a pattern out of it. I can uh, name it myself and decide if it's synced or unsynced. It's a really nice user interface. It's pretty straightforward to use. Uh, they've also been uh, focusing on um, nesting elements and, and styling nested elements so they kind of look the same uh, and make the design uh, actually work a little better. So let's just take a look here, group. Uh, and so we can style those things together in a block. So instead of having to do, um, background on each of those things, you can now group and style the group a lot better. Uh, sorry about the quality of this video. The original video wasn't awesome quality. This is kind of what we have to work with. But uh, yeah, it's going to make things a lot simpler to deal with. Uh, so you can see right here in the color area, the elements that are inside this group are surfaced. That's kind of cool. Uh, the block editor is just getting more and more intuitive and easier and easier to use. They've also changed a little bit about uh, how the audio components of WordPress are going to work. They're going to, um, they're going to be updated. So the, uh, they, the styling is similar and the interaction is similar uh, and the audio player is just gonna look a lot cleaner than it, than it did before. And so there's some examples of what that really kind of cool. This is the waveform of that audio. It's kind of cool. And you, you can see it right there as well. Again, the images are fairly small. That's kind of, we had bad original images to work with. Uh, this is all they're showing right now, but a uh, really good upgrade, I think, to the way um, audio is being presented in WordPress. Also a little more work on that light box. Uh, we talked about that just a little bit ago, but here's some additional screens on that. So, you know, zooming in on the click, you can, uh, you know, change a lot of, you know, what resolution of the image is gonna be used in the light box. There's just a lot of cool settings here. Uh, that you can actually start to play with in the latest releases of Gutenberg. Uh, kind of cool to see. We also talked a little bit about uh, the fonts and uh, the font library that's coming. Uh, and here's some of the design of what that might look like uh, on the inside of WordPress. Install, you know, you'll connect to Google Fonts. And once you're in, you'll get either a grid or a list, a searchable list with some preview, with a note that they'll be served from your own server. So the design team is taking all of this cool development that's happening, happening and making a lot more, a lot easier to use for uh, those of us that use WordPress professionally, as well as clients who are, you know, maybe not professional web developers. Something else that is long overdue that I'm excited about is the new table design that's coming into the admin area. So when you think about the tables in the admin area, I'm talking about like the all post screen where everything's kind of in a grid. And that's been the same since like WordPress 3.9 or something like that. It's been years since that's gotten a refresh. And uh, here's the first round of um, design suggestion of what that might look like. Um, it's just going to be a lot easier to use. There's a context menu that, that get, gives you a lot of features that you might want, uh, but keeps everything nice and clean. Uh, again, this, this could uh, look a lot different by the time it actually publishes. But you see a quick search filter list here, post status, uh, adding a filter like based on category or status or whatever right there. 
so it's going to clean up that the, the whole admin area is going to be cleaned up significantly. Um, oh, yeah. So you're and by the way, you're looking at the middle of the screen, right? So the sidebar, uh, just like today, there's it's all white pretty much in a, a light screen on the content area. The sidebar, of course, will have some color or at least some dark color there as well. So that's what they're working on. Uh, additional areas of the admin design uh, that are being worked on are, you know, how might we introduce uh, new paradigms or UI models that make WordPress easier to use? How might we design WordPress in such a way that it can be tailored and rebranded? Like if you want to make WordPress your own as an agency uh, and really customize the inside, how would we do that better? Uh, how might we use this as an opportunity to reinvigorate the user experience and attract a new audience? So. They're asking really good questions and they're seeing some things happen. Here's what the interface might start to look like. Again, they're small-ish pictures. They don't really want people zooming in and doing uh, deep critiques because they're not at that space yet. But uh, it's just a lot cleaner of an interface, whether in dark mode or light mode. Uh, so a lot of work is being done and it's really modernizing the UI of the admin area, which is long, long, long overdue. So here's where we are in WordPress 6.4. Uh, beta is out next week, beta one, uh, the general release scheduled for November the 7th. So thankfully no holiday releases this year uh, of major WordPress versions. So that's good. Uh, something else going on in the core world. There's a lot of core news today, folks. Uh, something else going on in the core world is this new performance translations feature plugin. I think we mentioned this briefly in the last news roundup and a lot of traction has been gained since last month. So this is some work of the core performance team. They've released this new feature plugin called Performant Translations. And again, a feature plugin, that's a technical term in the WordPress ecosystem. A feature plugin is something that it, it new features that are destined for core WordPress are always developed in a feature plugin first. So this is a plugin that's generally contributed to by high level developers and has a lot of community interaction. And then at some point when this work is done, they'll make a merge request to take this code that they've developed and tested in a plugin and actually merge it into core. So that's what's happening with this new performance translations plugin. And the goal is to speed up the, uh, the <laughs> speed up websites that have multiple languages. Uh, and so right now, um, translatable websites are very, very slow because uh, websites that use translation typically have to convert all of the, the different language files into PHP to be served in a browser every time a page loads. And so that decreases performance overall, especially on a high traffic site. So this plugin actually changes the way uh, this works and sort of caches out those, um, the translation files so that things load much more quickly. So this is a plugin that you simply activate it and it works. There's no settings required and it cleans up after itself, after it's uninstalled. It supports multiple translation file formats, multiple text domains, multiple locations. Uh, so if you're dealing in the multilingual world, this is one you might want to check out. It's the Performant Translations plugin. Uh, and this is part of Project Gutenberg to, you know, make multilingual better in WordPress. Uh, once again, this is a beta plugin, so obviously test with caution. Um, the the uh, and if you have any issues, uh, report those to the support forum or create an issue on the uh, GitHub repository. All right, let's turn the page to some Gutenberg news. We had three drops of Gutenberg, I believe, or three drops of Gutenberg uh, over the last month. Uh, anyway. I'm trying to look and see. I think it's three. Anyhow, uh, August 23rd, Gutenberg 16.5 dropped it uh, uh, over 200 different bug fixes, some enhancements. It focused mo mostly on the command palette. That's that new really cool um, search bar that if you like keyboard shortcuts, you're going to love the command palette and uh, give some additional customization in blocks. Uh, so new block related commands have been introduced into the command palette. I'll show you a video about that in just a second. Uh, so like block transformations, duplicate, copy, remove. Um, and it works right in distraction free mode as well, which is super cool. So here we are in distraction free mode. We pop open the command palette and we're going to go to move. And now we can just move things right around. Now here, 
we're going to um, now change this to a gallery. And look at there, we've moved these images into a gallery. That's kind of cool. Now look, we can remove the block. It got rid of the gallery block right there. Uh, and now we can um, insert and choose an option, insert after block, boom, right there. So if you like keyboard shortcuts, um, a lot of folks do. The, this new, the new features here in the command palette are super cool. Uh, check those out. They're available. And if you install the Gutenberg plugin, you can play around with these now. They've also added, added additional supports for multiple blocks, including uh, details block and uh, a post content block, file block. Uh, so here's how those look. Um, we'll get in here. There's our details block, which is an expand on click that from time to time you might see come up in the need for design uh, projects. So now we have uh, additional space. It didn't have a lot of these dimensions when it was first introduced. So now padding and margin, all those things are available for that details block. Yep, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Gutenberg 16.6 .6 dropped on September the 6th. Uh, this is a super cool little feature that's been added. Uh, these were formerly known as auto inserted blocks. They've now been renamed to block hooks. Uh, this is a new sidebar panel that's added into the side, the, like the right sidebar where all, you know, block and, and page and all that shows up on the right sidebar. Um, and a new panel is there that's currently called plugins. They may change that. And a plugin that you activate can add some things in there that are toggleable. That's a word, toggleable. They can be toggled. And when you do that, it adds blocks in predefined spots. For example, here we have a mini cart block and a like button. So the like button's over here, mini cart, and you can toggle those on and off. Uh, they're predefined where they're going to show up. And uh, yeah, these, this is just a quick toggle that's right there in the editor, which is kind of cool. Uh, so that is the block. They're called block hooks. I think you'll see more plugins taking advantage of this new feature. It's really been cleaned up and it works well. Uh, they've also uh, added this, which I think is really, really helpful. Uh, it's a feature called captured toolbars. So if you have a group of blocks or nested blocks, a lot of times when you would click on a block that was underneath like a parent block, then your editor bar would appear over the top of the parent block and you couldn't quite see what was going on. Now they've changed that so that it actually uh, goes above the, uh, the block itself. So here you can see there's a block quote. And rather than the menu bar going over the top of the text, it actually shows up at the top of the group, which just makes a lot of sense. It's a great, it's a small UI improvement, but it's great. Like if this has been needed for a while. Yeah. So a lot of good stuff done in Gutenberg over the past couple of weeks and uh, really happy to see that. Again, this is not in core yet. Uh, you'll have to download the Gutenberg beta plugin in order to see these features. But these are among the features that will be merged into core WordPress in 6.4. All right, let's turn the page and talk about some security news. Uh, the number of vulnerabilities continue to be high. We're at 150 plus every month now for the last several months. Uh, so 181 patched vulnerabilities, 154 uh, still active plugin vulnerabilities and 19 theme vulnerabilities. Uh, there are five uh, WordPress vulnerability reports that were published since the last news roundup. The links are there in the footer. But of course, if you're using iTheme Security Pro, you don't have to worry about any of this because it's going to automatically uh, patch your site if the vulnerability is patched by uh, the theme or plugin developer. As iTheme Security scans your site twice a day, it will automatically apply that fix if you set that up under version management. Pretty cool stuff. All right, some big news in the WordPress security world, uh, pardon me, this is security world in general. Uh, back uh, just last week, if you haven't seen this news yet, it's something you definitely want to pay attention to. Uh, all four major browsers were impacted by a single zero-day vulnerability. So Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Safari, all impacted by this vulnerability that was related to how uh, the browsers handle WebP images. So it's an ex exploit that can lead to a system crash and arbitrary code execution, meaning a, a hacker could just run stuff on your computer. It's a bad deal. Uh, hackers could gain control over an infected device. 
Uh, the Apple vulnerability is even broader because it actually uses iMessage uh, to send um, infected images and it could be used to install uh, the Pegasus spyware onto iPhones. So make sure uh, generally iPhones automatically update themselves unless you've told it um, to not to do so. So just make sure all of your browsers, all of your operating systems, you know, are installing these security patches as they come out because these zero-day vulnerabilities are nasty, nasty business. Uh, thankfully, a lot, most of our software developers have, you know, these quick releases that will immediately patch uh, software that has the uh, auto updates turned on. So it's just a good idea in the climate that we live in to keep your stuff set to auto update. Another uh, major security issue, Kathy Zant predicted this last year when we talked about the LastPass breach. And I talked about it even more when we were going through the process of resetting passwords and that whole training uh, live stream. Uh, experts have now feared that crooks have cracked keys uh, that were stolen in the last past breach. So there was a, uh, a series of cryptocurrency thefts that have happened over the last month uh, in which tech savvy individuals, including uh, a lot of folks whose names you might know, uh, security experts believe these, uh, the, these exploits are linked to cracked password vaults from these folks that were stolen in last year's LastPass breaches. Almost every victim of these cryptocurrency thefts had their cryptocurrency seed phrase uh, saved there in LastPass. And with the seed phrase, the attackers, it's, it's a master key to all your cryptocurrency. So it's a bad thing. Uh, Taylor Monahan, who's the lead, lead product manager of MetaMask, found a pattern that connected over 150 thefts that resulted in a loss of over $35 million in cryptocurrency. It's a big business hacking these days. Victims were deeply integrated into the tech and cryptocurrency ecosystem. And uh, the, the issue here is what we talked about last year, Kathy Zant and I, is when the, the, the thieves um, stole the LastPass vaults, they downloaded you know, the data. Now it was encrypted, but the issue is now the vault is there and they can sit there and hammer on it with GPUs uh, that, you know, can crack even complicated, long master passwords a lot faster than it's just somebody trying to access it on the web. Uh, so they can just put that in their own little environment and crack away at it. And it appears that uh, you, nobody can prove for sure, but it appears that last that, that these vaults have been breached. Uh, so a password security largely depends on the complexity and the number of iterations that were set in LastPass settings. So how many times uh, the uh, information in the vault was cycled through the encryption process. Um, I was one of the ones who'd been using LastPass for years, and my number of uh, iterations was set at like 10, when it should have been 400. LastPass never told us to update those things, and nobody ever knew. Uh, and so it's a, it was a real problem. Uh, I'm expecting some attorneys to get involved in this at some point. Um, anyhow, certainly a developing story, and uh, we'll certainly be keeping you up to date as more information becomes available. Bottom line, if you're still using LastPass, make sure your iterations are turned way up. And uh, you really, if you, you were using LastPass uh, last year, you have to just assume that anything that was in your vault is going to, at some point, be compromised and reset all your passwords, which is just no fun at all. Another big security story that hit this month was uh, zombie themes and plugins. So uh, it's a fun name, gets a lot of attention, but basically it means a WordPress theme or plugin that has been abandoned in the WordPress theme or plugin directory. So about 1.6 million WordPress websites by the best estimate are at risk since they're using themes or plugins that have been abandoned by their developers. The developers can't be reached. So hundreds of themes and plugins remained unpatched uh, despite uh, serious published vulnerabilities. So if a vulnerability pops up, the WordPress theme or plugin team will remove that plugin or theme from the directory, but nothing is done about all the sites that currently have that theme or plugin installed. And site owners don't really know if there's a problem or not. Uh, so zombie theme and plugin, if this is an issue that poses serious security risk, because a lot of people that are non-technical that use WordPress for their cat blog or whatever, they have no idea this is a problem. And how would they know, right? So some thought is being given to that. 
Uh, there's no warning in the admin area, for example. That should be a big deal. Like if a, if a theme or plugin is installed on a site and it's been pulled from a directory, there ought to be some notice. Lord knows we have enough notices in the admin area. Let us have one that's useful. Uh, so some thought by people, a lot of thought is being given to this and the conversation is happening. I think we'll see some of that uh, moving forward. Uh, Patch Stack is one of the ones urging uh, change across the WordPress ecosystem. But in the meantime, their virtual patching feature helps to automatically fix vulnerabilities, even if the developer hasn't. And that Patch Stack firewall is coming soon in the new Solid Security Pro plugin. All right, uh, just realized we forgot to update this, um, this headline. That may have been me. Anyway, uh, there was a, uh, the final security story this month goes to a couple of Danish hosting firms, Cloud Nordic and uh, Azero Cloud. They lost all their client data because of a ransomware attack. Here were a couple of hosts that did not proactively apply security patches. Hackers found them, put uh, ransomware on their servers. And the company not only did not apply correct security patches, they also didn't have a good backup strategy. Uh, so they didn't really have any pre-hacked data to restore. The hackers demanded 1.15 Bitcoin per client to restore the company's data. That's a lot of money. Uh, they couldn't pay it. Many ransomware clients had no data backups. They had to rebuild their websites from scratch. My point about this is wherever you host your site, Make sure that you are certain what your web host's security and backup strategies are and make absolutely certain that you keep a backup of your own site someplace else. You've heard me, if you've been on uh, these live streams, you've heard me talk about the importance of using uh, a plugin like Backup Buddy, which is about to become solid backups to back up the site in full and save it off in cloud storage like Dropbox or S3 or something like that. So very important to do that for just this kind of situation. All right, let's talk about a little bit of news from Solid WP. The rebrand in public is still in process. I have no new information for you on that. It's coming soon. Uh, I got, actually, I can tell you this. I did get to download and click around in the new Solid Security plugin. And oh my goodness, it is so much better. It is so much easier to use. Uh, even, I haven't even gotten into the patch stack integration yet. But just the new menuing system and the way things are found and some of the new features are just so much better uh, than the current iTheme security plugin. So really happy for you to be able to see that coming up soon. Uh, do you have a couple of upcoming premium tra training events I want to talk about? Google Analytics Bootcamp with my friend David Zimmerman is coming up next week. Uh, that is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week from 1 to 3 Central Time. So if you're a member of iThemes training, you get access to this. Uh, and we'll learn all about Google Analytics with David Zimmerman, focusing on Google Analytics 4, as well as Google Data Studio and Google Tag Manager. Uh, we also have uh, the WordPress AI workshop. That is next month's uh, event. I still don't have a registration open for that because I was hoping we would launch <laughs> the Solid Academy site before now. I'm just going to put the old-fashioned registration page up uh, on the current site because we're getting to the point where you need to register for that. Uh, and it doesn't look like it doesn't look like the academy site's going to be launched for a few more weeks yet. Um, the other two premium events for this month, November and December, are all about the starter site. This has been our habit for the last few years. As we get to the end of the year, focus on rebuilding your starter site so that you have a great starting point for every site that you build going forward. And that will again be our focus for November and December in our premium events. I will mention that if you missed our uh, live stream last week with Timothy Jacobs, the lead developer for Solid WP, uh, we had a great uh, talk about passkeys and passkey integration in the current iTheme security as well as Solid security. Uh, and uh, it's really neat to see the advancements passkeys have made. They're becoming more widely adopted, easier to use. So if you missed this, this is definitely one to go back and rewatch. Let's kill the password with Timothy Jacobs. Quick overview of the next upcoming trainings here. Office hours coming up uh, Thursday, Google Analytics Bootcamp. Plugin Roundup is coming up October 3rd. Here's a good one. Uh, if you've been around our community for a while, you likely may have some old iThemes Builder sites. So iThemes Builder is no longer supported by iThemes. It's not receiving any updates and hasn't for some time. Uh, and we're going to be talking, Kathy Zant and I are going to be talking about rebuilding your iThemes Builder sites in Cadence 
That's coming up on October the 10th. And of course, fly every month through the end of the year. All righty, let's talk about plugins. Uh, we had a big WooCommerce release a couple of weeks ago. WooCommerce 8.1 is dropped. It continues to support PHP 7.3, but that will phase out at the end of next month. Uh, WooCommerce 8.2 will start requiring PHP 7.4. <laughs> so uh, this version of WooCommerce uh, was a lot, there's a lot of block focus. Um, so there's a new uh, featured products block that you can just drop right in on a page. That's kind of cool. This is really helpful if you have, for example, a WooCommerce site with a blog. Uh, just, if you're using the block editor in your blog, you can just uh, do a block pattern that pulls in products right there. So if you're blogging about certain products, you can just pull them right into a block and it's really cool. Uh, so this is all built into Core WooCommerce now. Uh, they also have a uh, follow us on social media block that is very easy to set up and configure. It's just right out of the block, the box. The blocks are right out of the box with WooCommerce. Uh, they've also done some customizations with the mini cart. Again, kind of zoomed out here, but you can see clicking the mini cart block over here, you now have some styling options. This is the default mini cart that comes with WooCommerce and they're continuing to improve that block. Uh, they've also added some uh, uh, API interactivity with the product button. This is actually cool. There's some new, um, what you're going to notice is a nicer interactivity on the front end. So as you add, for example, uh, over here in our sidebar cart, you see the number ticking up. You see a nice little animation show up right here. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this new feature. Yep, so it's a really clean and nice animation uh, between the cart and your page. That's kind of cool. Uh, they also have product a product collection block, also very helpful for like blog posts, that sort of thing. If you want to uh, create a, a, a bespoke collection of products, you know, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and show it all in a block, this makes it really easy to do that. Again, core WooCommerce in this new product collection block. All right, let's move on to some news about AI. Uh, the world of AI continues to move right on. And uh, we'll start with Yoast introducing uh, AI into the new Yoast Premium plugin. The latest version of Yoast Premium integrates AI-powered title and meta description generation. So if you, like me, love nothing more than sitting there and creating title and meta descriptions for all of your content, oh my gosh, I can't stand that. Uh, Yoast is now integrating in. It's going to look at the content and create, give you some options for uh, titles and meta descriptions uh, right there uh, with a single click. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, it analyzes content, offers five unique suggestions for titles and meta across all your post types. Now, again, uh, this doesn't replace the human touch. You're going to, at least yet, AI continues to get better and better. Uh, so you want to review and refine that sort of thing. Uh, it is available in beta in Yoast SEO Premium. Here's how that looks. Look at that. Pretty nice little interface there too. And you can even, if you don't like anything there, you can generate five more, then apply your title. Boom, there it is. Uh, and here are our click, please. Okay, here we go. Uh, works the same way with meta descriptions. All right, uh, what do we do when we don't know if something is AI or not? Uh, there were, in the beginning, some tools that like, for example, OpenAI uh, had that would allow you to paste in some text and determine with what level of certainty was this text generated by AI. Uh, that has now been pulled by OpenAI. We talked about that last month because it couldn't really tell what was AI and what wasn't. But now there's a new tool called SynthID uh, that is designed to help identify images that were generated by AI. So this is a tool out of Google's DeepMind initiative and Google Cloud that is aimed at identifying images uh, generated by AI. It adds a digital watermark to, and I love this term, synthetic images. I think that's a very appropriate term for AI generated images. They're synthetic images. And this watermark, you know, you can't see it with your own eye. So the watermark is designed so that even if you resize, edit, crop, whatever this image, in an image editor like Photoshop, uh, or if the metadata is stripped out of the image, the watermark will remain. Uh, so they've got some serious technology that's embedding that watermark. Uh, these tools are very important because uh, look, I mean, the days are coming where 
in some national political race, there's going to be a fake image that's out there. And how, you know, how can you tell if this is a real image or not? Uh, those days are coming uh, if they're not already have, or if they haven't already happened yet. Uh, so the, a tool like this is going to be very, very important uh, for the future of trusting things that are on the Internet. Uh, it's currently available to uh, Vertex AI customers. So uh, they've given us a few images. I mean, it's y'all, they could have just taken an image and drew a white line down the middle. I don't know. They say some is watermark, some isn't. I can't tell the difference. And I guess that's the point. Uh, so there you go. All righty. Uh, another little bit of news here is that AI bots are now smart enough and can mimic the human brain and vision enough so as to make CAPTCHA technology useless. So a new study that has, has shown that AI bots were able to solve the CAPTCHA puzzles on 120 of the world's most popular websites, 85 to 100% of the time. The majority of the bots were able to solve CAPTCHAs with over 96% accuracy, which is better than humans. Okay, so... CAPTCHAs uh, are, uh, they're on their way out. Uh, designing a better CAPTCHA is really complicated because if you make the CAPTCHA harder to solve, you're going to frustrate people. So it defeats the purpose. Uh, so a new technology is going to have to be created uh, to solve this problem. CAPTCHA, many say, is on the path to obsolescence. Uh, major news outlets are now starting to block OpenAI's GPT bot web crawler. Now, we talked about, I believe, last month, uh, there's a line you can add to your robots.txt that will block the, uh, the OpenAI GPT bot from crawling your site and using its data in uh, OpenAI's large language model. Uh, well, last month, several major news outlets began blocking the GPT bot from accessing their content. New York Times, CNN, Ro uh, Reuters, and ABC Australia are among a growing list of companies that have blocked GPT bot. Uh, the blocks can be found right there in the robots.txt. You can just go to domain.com slash robots.txt and view that. Uh, large language models like ChatGPT require vast amounts of information to train, as you can imagine. Crawling news sites is, um, is an important process for that. Uh, OpenAI says that uh, giving their GPT bot access to your site is important to ensure accuracy and safety, uh, but it's unknown what this is going to do, right? It's unknown if this move is going to attract other news outlets to block open AI or other sites to block. And if, you know, AI doesn't create content out of nothing. It's taking content that it's learned from digesting the web and outputting. Uh, and so if there are fewer and fewer things for AI to be trained upon, then you know, it's going to become dumber and dumber. So this is an ongoing war and we'll see, you know, what happens there. A couple of other bits of AI news. Here's a great article on codingwp.com, five ways to use AI in your WooCommerce store. And also, you know, how do we, uh, how is AI going to transform uh, WordPress website builders? Great article there on WP Lift. All right, let's move into some other news. Uh, all right. In the latest episode of WP Drama, how many of you tuned in for this last week? Uh, it, it hit the fan about midweek last week. Uh, developers have raised concerns about WordPress.com plugin listings outranking the same plugins on WordPress.org in Google search. So basically, this all started with John Black. Uh, John Blackburn is uh, the developer of the user switching plugin, among others. Uh, he's a longtime, well-respected developer in the WordPress community, really smart guy. And as he was doing a search for his plugin, he noticed that the WordPress.com plugin listing was a, above the WordPress.org, and others started chiming in on this, and it became a whole thing. Now, why is this a problem? Because if the WordPress.com uh, listing, you know, and somebody clicks on that, and they're, you know, a novice user, First of all, there's already a lot of confusion. How many of you have had conversations with people, clients, family, friends, whoever, and they've confused WordPress.com with WordPress.org? Uh, it's confusing for basic users. Um, and if you view a .com plugin listing, there's an invitation to upgrade to Word, you know, full-featured WordPress.com to use plugins. And so people might not realize they can use this plugin for free with you know, open source WordPress. It's confusing. Uh, and, you know, this is why plugin developers are, are frustrated over this. 
Uh, so John Blackburn highlighted the issue of voice concern. A lot of folks have chimed in on this. Rebecca Gill, uh, an SEO expert who we've had here for many years doing SEO training for us, suggested it's a simple fix if .com will simply no index their plugin listing or canonicalize it to point authority at wordpress.org. None of this would be a problem. Uh, however, WordPress uh, co-creator, co-founder Matt Mullenweg has defended the move, stating that .com rankings give plugins greater distribution. So it's just the latest episode of WP Drama. It's a long-standing tension between the commercial nature of WordPress.com and Automatic and the WordPress free and open source software project at WordPress.org. So we'll see. There's, there are folks who are very unhappy right now, uh, and we will see what happens with this. Now, in the middle of this, <laughs> on Friday... Um, there was a change that was made to the WordPress recommended hosting page. Now, uh, on Friday, at some point on September the 15th, WordPress.com was added as a recommended host on the WordPress.org hosting page. Uh, this follows the removal of SiteGround from that list back in July. It's unclear how a company comes to be listed on this page but it's just odd timing in the middle of plugin gate that happened last week. So, you know, stay tuned. We'll see what happens there. All right, turning the page to something much less controversial. How about some Google search engine rankings? <laughs> um, Google in September 23rd, uh, September of this year. Yeah, let me start again. This month, Google will release an update to its helpful content system. So Google is updating this, the algorithm and the part of the algorithm that decides if a content is helpful or not. Um, they're updating their standards. Uh, they do this quite a bit. And this is something that is, uh, th this is a, a little bit of a change that's interesting. So Google's goal has always been, let's get the most helpful content that is written by people for people in search results. Now the by people part, is what got people concerned and asking questions about, well, what about AI-generated content, right? Uh, though Google is never really clear about the specifics of its algorithm, here's the interesting change. So this was before helpful content written by people for people, which there was a lot of conversation about, is AI-generated content going to hurt your site? Well, look at the new standard. People, uh, Google, Google wants people to see original helpful content created for people in search results. This to a lot of people, including myself, means Google isn't concerned if the content is actually written by people or AI. The issue is, is it created for people and to help people or is it created with keyword stuffing to help search ranking? If you are generating content that's just keyword stuffed and doesn't read well and isn't helpful to a real person, this is content that if Google doesn't catch it yet, they will, and it's going to hurt your ranking. This is, you know, like we talked about in last month's SEO masterclass uh, with Lindsay Halsey. If you, this has been Google's thing from the beginning, we want to get helpful content in front of people. And so if you're using some schemey tactic that's like you in the back room, turning dials and moving levers in the, in the back room, trying to make your site rank, it may work for a little while, but eventually Google's algorithms are going to catch up with you and that content is going to be delisted or de certainly devalued. Just great, right, good content. That's what Google's saying. Uh, so this change favors high quality human intended content over that SEO content. Um, there's also some additional points about hosting third party content and changing dates. If you're deep into SEO, you might want to look into this. Uh, Google provides a self-assessment for sites that have been negatively impacted and says that recovery could take some time. Yeah. All right. Uh, another story uh, this past month that is interesting was a survey of the top seven uh, content management systems on the web about their core web vital scores. Uh, Duda, which is kind of a white labeled uh, agency um, version of Squarespace, like you could go on Duda and put client sites there and they have their own builder and stuff. Anyway, Duda uh, had the highest web core value performance of 73%. That's pretty cool. Uh, Shopify has positioned second. Wix made a 50% score improvement. Uh, Drupal also improved significantly. Uh, so it's a good deal. Uh, content management systems are continuing to get faster. WordPress has also increased 7% uh, up to 32%. 
which is unfortunately the slowest of the bunch. Uh, here's the graph. Uh, we see the WordPress core performance team continuing to make changes that will hopefully inch us up uh, the mark there. Another great story is uh, this was actually a focus of WordCamp US this year. Uh, WordPress VIP, which is an enterprise level WordPress hosting for Fortune 500 companies, big government entities, uh, is now powering NASA's flagship website. You can take a look at beta.nasa.gov. Uh, NASA selected WordPress to be the engine behind its uh, new websites and its streaming service. WordPress VIP and an agency called Lone Rock Point are building out NASA's new CMS. The initiative aims to improve user experience and accessibility for all. NASA wants its content to be available for all, as well as, of course, security. Now, interestingly, as a part of this project, NASA contributed to the Accessibility Checker plugin from Equalize Digital. This is the company that's run by our friend uh, Amber, who did our accessibility workshop not long ago. Uh, Amber and Equalize Digital, their company created this accessibility uh, checker plugin. NASA invested in that to produce uh, some front end uh, features that we'll talk about in a minute. And uh, those features are publicly available now in the free version of the plugin. So that's very cool. Uh, NASA gave a presentation and a workshop at WordCamp US. Both of those are available here. I would strongly recommend that you watch these. Uh, just the, if you are at all interested in logistics, of how in the world you get a site with as much content as, as nasa.gov uh, and get that moved over to a whole other platform. It is mind blowing. And they talk a lot about that uh, in this first talk. And then the workshop is hands on with how their back end work. So take a look at that. Uh, on that same note, again, uh, NASA funded the Equalize Digital uh, plugin. Uh, they sponsored this new feature called Front End Highlighting. Uh, the new highlighting feature, if, you, if you're an admin or an editor, you look at the front end of the site, it highlights, like draws a box around areas that have accessibility issues. It doesn't label them all, of course, because it's really hard for any you know, software to catch all the issues, but it highlights the ones that are major issues. And so it makes dealing with these fixes a whole lot easier. Again, those features are now available free in that free version of the plugin. Check it out. That's pretty cool. Uh, WP Includes is a new organization, a new initiative aimed at increasing the representation of women in WordPress communities. It was founded by Siobhan McCone from Human Made and Francesco Morano from XWP. Uh, their goal is to uh, mentor and support women through a five-month program and help their career develop in the WordPress ecosystem. I think that's super cool. Uh, they're recruiting women at the C-level or director position to act as mentors for upcoming women in the community. Uh, this is really good. Uh, you know, in, in most tech fields, women are underrepresented, and it's great to see some folks uh, really uh, trying to change that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another article here we thought was interesting was, is WordPress dying? What is the state of WordPress? Um, it's really a, it, it's, it's, it's a clickbait title, to be honest. It's a WP Beginner article. Uh, but the questions are interesting. Uh, there are a number of voices out there in the, in the Twitter sphere, X sphere, Reddit sphere, that whole world saying WordPress is dying. Is it true? What do the facts say? WordPress is still solid at 43% of all websites whose CMS we know using it. WordPress powers websites for big name brands like Sony, Disney, Facebook, NASA. Uh, you see that uh, in, in the Google Trends, WordPress had a big peak 2014, 15, uh, but it, it's pretty stable. This is the, again, not the usage of WordPress, but Google Trends, and as compared to other content management systems, you see Joomla back, you know, 2009. This is when uh, WordPress overtook Joomla. Everybody's still very, very low. And again, these are just people searching for things about the topic. Uh, so WordPress is still way more popular on the web and in search volume. Uh, and then, of course, what really matters is the actual usage. Uh, here's WordPress continuing to grow, again, stabilizing. Uh, and then everybody else way down here. Uh, is WordPress going to die? I, not anytime soon. But what would it take? Here's another article from the WP Minute. What would it take for a CMS to catch up to WordPress? So WordPress has dominated the CMS market for years. Uh, growth has flattened. That is true. Uh, some competitors have gained significantly. That is true. But most of those gains are a result of other CMSs falling down, not WordPress falling down. 
Uh, but for any CMS to overtake WordPress remains unlikely for the foreseeable future. Uh, it's a great article. You might want to spend some time reading it. It's pretty cool. Uh, so one of the things the article says, if a new open source CMS that was just as extendable, that prioritized performance and accessibility and flexibility, if something like that could be created that had a community that was just as strong as the WordPress community, maybe it could rival WordPress in the years to come. But it would take something like that and nothing like that is on the horizon. GoDaddy has retired the Media Temple brand. If you're, again, a geezer like myself, you remember the old Media Temple, one of the early leaders in uh, website hosting. Media Temple is now gone. GoDaddy uh, purchased Media Temple back in 2013 and has now decided to retire the brand. So, uh, yep, the end of a chapter in web hosting history. Media Temple is no more. If you go to MediaTemple.com, it goes to a GoDaddy page. Uh, one little interesting thing that popped up during the WordPress, uh, uh, WordCamp US was this offer from WordPress.com that I got to be honest, made me and others scratch their head. Uh, a hundred year plan on WordPress.com for $38,000. So you pay $38,000 and they're going to give you hosting and a domain for a hundred years. Uh, it includes managed hosting, backup, submission to the Internet Archive, dedicated support and a hundred year domain life. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. It's just a little weird, uh, but this was in Matt's talk. Uh, he's very excited about this. So there you go. If you want to spend $38,000 and make sure you have a website for a hundred years, you can do that now. A couple of more final notes here. Post status has celebrated 10 years and it's adding some significant partners. Uh, post status is a community of WordPress professionals. Uh, it is, it tries to be, uh, its goal is to be the uh, center for WordPress business, uh, the community for WordPress business. So uh, Joost Devault and his wife, Marika Van Racht, uh, Van Der Racht have invested in post status as equity partners, along with Corey and Lindsay Miller. Uh, so uh, Joost and Marike are being brought on to strengthen and expand the business of supporting and promoting WordPress across the WordPress uh, business ecosystem. Uh, Post Status offers that platform where WordPress community members, company owners, and investors can collaborate and stay connected. Uh, Yoast is going to be the CTO working on the technical side. They've got a lot of plans for growth. Uh, Lindsay Miller is now the official chief marketing officer, and Corey Miller, the founder of iThemes, will be the CEO and continue those duties. You can also find me there weekly doing a WordPress business news post there at poststatus.com. Last but not least here, uh, the enterprise agency 10UP has merged with Fuel Digital Media. Fuel is a UK agency. 10UP uh, is a, one of the largest WordPress enterprise agencies. They're the one, for example, that created the, um, the Google uh, site. Google, help me, somebody, the Google plugin, <laughs> the Google site kit. Thank you. Uh, they were tapped to create the Google site kit. They work at that level, high level stuff, and they've teamed with uh, Fuel Digital Media, which is more of a mobile type company to create this massive, giant, super agency of 400 full-time team members. Yeah. All right, let's uh, wrap up with some WordPress community news. Several upcoming WordCamps across the United States. Uh, WordCamp Rochester is coming up on September the 30th in New York. WordCamp Omaha, Nebraska, October 14th and 15th. Also, WordCamp Atlanta, October 14th and 15th. I'll be giving a talk there on systems. If you're there, make sure you come and see me. Uh, there are also some global WordCamps coming up. As Gene mentioned, WordCamp Vancouver, British Columbia is this weekend. So hope everybody has a great Saturday there at WordCamp Vancouver. Also, WordCamp uh, in Poland is coming up September the 30th. We also have WordPress Accessibility Day coming up the end of this month, that 24-hour event talking all about WordPress accessibility. Free event, but you got to register. All right, folks, that wraps us up for this month's WordPress News Roundup. I'm dropping one more time the slides into the chat. Uh, if you'd like to download these slides when you came in late, there are the links. The link for the replay is also there. We'll have that up in about an hour from now. Hope you have a good rest of the day. I'm back on Thursday for members with office hours here on iThemes Training, where we go further together.